Hello, everyone, all my NYP friends, and and thank you again for tuning in today. Um, I can't wait. Um, Sherlyn, Sherlyn Wright, thank you for being here again. This is our third session together. And for those that have not been able to see the previous sessions, um, they're always available. Um, you can just go back and press play after this and, and, and see what the things that you've missed. But I will introduce Sherlyn again because she deserves that. Um, for those that, that have, um, that have just tuning in and haven't seen those. Sherlyn has a 20 plus year career in studying and teaching mindfulness, self-awareness and spiritual modalities to thousands of clients and students around the world. In addition to this, she also practices, get this, transcendental meditation, Ayurveda, meditation, aromatherapy, shamanic healing, and the list goes on. But right now with us, that she's spent, this is our time with our NYP um, friends and, 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 and viewers, this time that she's spending with us, she's sharing another very big part of her expertise, which is animal communication. And uh, Sherlyn has shared in the two episodes before. Um, the first one was, what is animal connection and communication? So please watch that because she explains in detail um, what that actually entails. And she also, ha you know, she, she gives workshops, she gives private sessions, and she gives classes, and they're online. So she can teach you in whichever part of the world you are. All her uh, contact details are displayed at the bottom and um, and will be continuously displayed on our website. So please contact Sherlyn. She will work with you, uh, with your pet when you have any issues. And apart from pets, FYI, which I will also put on the website, um, she has also, you know, she works with humans. And pets is one, animals is one part, but humans too. So, uh, so yes, you know, um, Sherlyn Wright, the first session was about animal connection. Initially, we were going to do a series of three. But when we got to the second session, which is our connection, why are animals in our lives? I, I looked at it, and I knew all the things that she was going to discuss in that session. And I said, Sherlyn, I don't think one session is enough. Can you please can we split this up in two? And she says, Nita, this is what I'm here for. I want to make sure that everyone, the viewers, understand what this is about. I don't want to give, you know, quick answers to this. And 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 it's a it's a vast, it's a bigger topic than I thought. Um, I have asked myself several times, you know, why are they in our lives? And I did not know again that these questions could be answered. So thank you, Sherlyn. Um, thank you for sharing all this. And I will revisit the last question that we were at. I would like to revisit that. And, um, and so that question was, do animals choose their life experiences? Yes, and thank you again, Nita, for having me here because, as you said, like I feel this is my purpose to really help people connect and and understand our our interconnection with all life forces. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, so, do animals uh, choose? Right? Mm -hmm. Do they choose their, their life experiences? And actually, they do. They. <laughs> I think there's like this, you know, there's this progression that we all go through, all life forces. We go through a different progression, right? We keep expanding our consciousness. Animals, they're also in their own realm, they're also having different experiences so that they can expand their consciousness because they're wanting to understand what it means, for instance, to be in nature by themselves, like being a, a lion, right? Um, and being a part of a a part of their their um, herd, and then 
um, maybe some animals are by themselves, right? Because like snakes, they're not, they don't stick with each other. They're on their own. There's a, there's a learning, there's a, there's an understanding of earth, for instance, and how earth operates that they want to understand. And then when they want to like learn how to love um, in a in a higher dimension, right? Or in a more expanded way, then they connect to humans. So what is it like to guide a human? What is it like to support a human? I mean, that's a whole vast learning experience for any animal life force to want to go through. So they do choose their experiences. It just depends on um, how they want to apply their knowledge Mm -hmm. and how they want to support earth and how they want to support humans. So I'm, I'm, I'm understanding what you're saying. So when they are, let's say the dog, for example, when they are together as a pack, how um, they, among themselves, how, like you said, how they communicate is by far different. Of course, I, I get that. I'm still, I'm still processing than how they, they try to communicate with the human. So this for them in itself is a learning experience. Oh, um, definitely it is. Because like, if we look at wolves, okay, let's look at them for, and let's say that we have like um, this pack, they are communicating with each other through telepathy all of the time. There's this sensing that's going on. They're understanding what their, you know, what their intention is, what their purpose is, where they're traveling, you know, how to hunt. So they're, they are in constant communication with each other and they're yeah. tuning in to other animals. So that's one way that they're applying their telepathy, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And their senses. But then to communicate with humans who do not communicate through telepathy at all right mm -hmm. we like we're speaking now we we talk to each other there's is in a way you could say it's it's an advanced way of communicating mm -hmm. right because we're communicating ideas and we're and we're talking to each other and body language all of that is is a whole form of communication mm -hmm. well here's this animal right dog for instance that's coming into our realm yes. right yeah. And being connected to us and they're also learning like wow okay this is how they communicate okay i'm still trying to telepathy you know communicate telepathically but but they also have to learn how to communicate with us in our way as well which is why they use their body language so they kind of in a way have to adapt to us um but it would be really great if we learn to also adapt to their way of communicating like through telepathy which is right. Um, you know, which in a way is, uh, I think it's an expanded way of communication. And as I said in previous ep episode, we do it. We just don't know how to intentionally apply it. Right. And this is, I cannot wait to start the course with you, which I will. Um, in, a, I, in a couple of weeks time, I am starting this course with you because you, like you said, you can teach, everyone can do it and you can teach them how to do it. And I'm very, very excited to do this. So all of you, whoever wants to learn, apparently it's, it doesn't take very long. Sherlyn's going to show you, teach you the steps. And how long does it take about Sherlyn to start the ball rolling with, with this, oh, with learning? Right. Yeah, to start the ball rolling, you can take one class. So that's, I call it the nature life force class that we connect to animals. Okay. And not only are you learning how to connect to animals, but also to plants, because mm -hmm. plants also in their own way communicate mm -hmm. as well as uh, gemstones. And then I have another class where we learn how to communicate with like, um, like the moon, right? Or right. communicate with earth. So yeah, so there's a one day class where we just focus on animals and plants. And then there's another day two class that focuses on like earth and other planets. Oh, I'm going to take that class too. Okay. For sure, because I I talk to the moon quite a bit, <laughs> but I never knew I never knew that the moon hears me and and stuff like that. I well I never yeah. ne never gave as much thought that the moon could hear me. But yeah, I'm gonna give I'm definitely gonna take those two classes from you, Sherlyn. Um, you know you already in the first episode animal communication you and connection you already shared nuggets of uh, you know, tips 
and, and wisdom with us on how to communicate. You already started doing that. And I started applying that in a small way with my with my dog, with my pets, with my baby. And and I feel there is a tiny shift going on now. They're mm. actually staring at me when I speak. There is there is a, a small shift going on. So I cannot wait to get to get the whole um, you know, the whole bit of of the whole experience of, of steps <laughs> on how to do it, you know, properly with the steps. Mm -hmm. Um so thank you for that. Thank you yeah. for that. Now comes a question that I struggle with. Okay? The topic is the question is why would pets choose to be in an animal shelter? And I'll tell you where I struggle with this question mm -hmm. and so that you can help me with 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 answering if you can. So um my belief and please correct me completely if i'm wrong because i have not studied this i haven't done any in-depth study but from what i believe is that you know uh the dogs originated from the wolf the one wolf one 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 class of wolf and what we did years and years ago is we started breeding them to the extent where now we have 300 plus different breeds of dogs and domesticating them and so we started that you know and we have all these breeds but now what's happened is we have a big problem worldwide where you know dogs are multiplying and multiplying and they don't have two or three babies they have nine ten you know seven eight and there is a big problem with dogs that are out there in the wild and you know we don't live anymore in in that wild kind of world where they can hunt and they can live in great packs together and all that no they have difficulty with food finding food water the climate shelter all that so so i just feel in a way this is a problem that we cause i could be wrong and we're abandoning them. We're just absolutely abandoning them because we are we, we cannot we cannot keep them in our homes. We we choose the perfect one, you know. I mean with we I say I don't I'm not I'm not judging anyone, but I'm just saying yes, you know, according to our uh personality and the size of our home and all that. Anyway, I'm going on a tangent with this. I just understand that shelters are overflowing dogs are suffering out there they are they're hungry they're lonely they're they have diseases out there in the wild and they're dying because they they have you know wounds and and the list goes on Sherlyn. and here is it you mean to say do they choose to be in an animal shelter well the I think they do because when I look at an animal shelter, and I actually work with an animal shelter in Taiwan and in Taipei, actually, and she does a fabulous job with taking care of the animals and finding them homes. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, there's when, again, we look at why animals are here, right? They are here to help us understand what it means to connect and to love yeah and part of it i think is by design why there are more animals because we need more love i mean when we look at the world and how we treat each other we're we don't treat each other as well as animals treat each other you know what i mean oh, oh terrible yeah, you know, we have a lot of judgment. We have a lot of, there's a lot of violence that's go, that goes on. I mean, we know what's going on in the world. And I think part of the reason why they're coming in is because one, to like, okay, we're here. And if 
we are open enough to adopt an animal, then we can have a semblance of understanding of what love is. We can at least start that, start that expression and be more comfortable in expressing it. So I think that's one of the reasons why is because they're trying to get our attention. Like, hello, here's a group of us and we want to be taken care of. We're here for you. Yeah. And I think if we, if people understood that, then there would be more adoptions. Like yeah. I have, yeah, I have several clients who adopt more than one dog. They adopt yeah. like several dogs, they take care of them. Um, and some of the dogs or animals, or even cats, like because the shelter I work with, she also uh, works with cats. Yeah. Um, and she'll have people come in and volunteer to take care of them, mm -hmm. which gives them, gives the people a chance yeah. to, yeah, to connect and say, wow, it's really nice. This is where I get a sense of peace. And then they decide, okay, I want to, I want to adopt. So this is why I think that they go into um, a shelter. One, like you said, there's overbreeding going on. Yeah. And so they have to go somewhere. Um, yeah. And, you know, so great. We have shelters to take care of them to a certain extent. Now it's up to us to have the awareness that, oh, you know what? Uh, here's a life force. Let me take it home. Let me bring more love to my life and support this animal. And we see that there's this, uh, this expanding, you know, effect of, of having more like love, compassion, our humanity expands, you know, their um, mission of guiding us is fulfilled. It's a win-win situation. It is a win-win. Absolutely. I mean, um, from what we can all read, the majority of our suffering is at the hands of, of us human hands. You know, at, at, from human hands is the majority of our suffering, not from natural disaster. This is right. what, what we do. And I agree with you. There's so much suffering in, in, you know, with us, you know, all of us, including me. I mean, we have anxiety, stress, you know, the dep depression, loneliness. Yeah. And yeah. and these are only mental. I'm only talking about the mental. It's more sorry. Yeah, you were saying something? Yeah. You know, I was just thinking, it's like, okay, like if more hospitals had people, because I know this is something that you're you're thinking of of doing, like, you know, training your animals to support people. But yes. look at all the yeah, but the, I mean, just think about all the animals in the shelters, think about all the hospitals like in the world. Think of all the 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 homes that that we have the elderly people in, right? I mean, there's there there you go. Fulfilled animals can come in and support. Thank you for saying that because this is what nurture your pet wants to do, wants to achieve the human suffering, animals are, are alone, bring them together. And we can, you know, and, and, and again, another, you know, bringing awareness by, we can only raise, you know, the whole joy and, and consciousness of mankind by awareness. There's no other way. And, and what you're doing is you are teaching us, reminding us and, and this is so important. And so thank you for for highlighting this, how how we can reduce all this suffering and pain. Now, I wanna I wanna ask another another question here. Um no, let let's let's ask this one first because there's something else I wanted to tell you. Um what are so so when you say so the different ways animals wanna be supported in animal shelters, like what are the different ways being a, so I want to hear you, you know, what, what, what is your take on this? How would they want to be? Well, I communicate, like I said, I work with a, a animal shelter in Taipei and she has me uh, communicate with them, send them healing. Cause some of them do have different physical challenges. Oh. Yeah. So um, I work with them quite frequently just to um, support you know, their physical body and, and their, their journey. And what they want is they do want to connect with us. Um, they're, they're a little family. So I just, just talking about the shelter in Taipei, they're a little family. They all understand each other. They support each other. They, they call each other brother and sister. So they, they have formed this, this bond, right. Oh, with each other. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so they're not, 
so they don't really feel alone, so to speak, but they do have an intention where they do want to be adopted. So how can we support them? Well, if they do want human contact, they do want to like, um, like I said, be of use because they all have a purpose. Mm -hmm. So what, what some people can do is again, they can go visit a shelter, even if they just go by for like 10 minutes and like talk to them or hold them or, um, feed them, you know, during feeding time, just be with them, anything. I mean, that, that's something that they would like because that gives them a chance to, um, at least for five or 10 minutes, they're living their purpose. They're saying, okay, Hey, I I'm doing something. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, even like giving them walks, because I know like the owner of the animal shelter, she'll have some volunteers come and just go walk the dogs, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. Take them out in nature because they want to be in nature. A lot of these animals that she has too, they've been abused. And so another thing that is really great is if, you know, someone who loves animals can go in and show a different side of, of, oh, a, yeah. yeah, you know, just, that, and because there's one, one dog that she has, doesn't like humans, very, has a lot of fear. And so what one of the volunteers does is just sit. Mm -hmm. She just sits next to the, next to the cage, the cage door is open. She sits there and then eventually he started coming out and would put his head, his head in her lap. I mean, it started that way, right? It, so he started trusting humans again. He started trusting like, okay, not all humans are abusive. They're actually pretty nice. So nice. those are some of the things that I think we can do. Now, another thing we can do once you learn like animal communication what i do is i just tune into them i just say hey guys how are you doing i just telepathically just give a you know hello high five how are you guys doing just so that they know that i care right yeah. there's a human who's not there with them but but in the world there's all these people who care that's that would be a wonderful thing that i can't wait to learn that that i can sit in my house and communicate with animals or in pets that are not even in my vicinity. I cannot wait to learn that because I want to believe that this is this is possible. Yeah. So, yeah. So Sherlyn, uh, so are you trying to say like when when um here's another scenario, okay? So there's shelters where where dogs are abandoned and they're left and 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 for whatever the reasons are, we don't need to go there. Um, but there's also um, the dogs, some of the dogs in the shelters are dogs that have been caught from the wild because, you know, they see them in the wild, they're hungry, they're, they're homeless, they're homeless. They're, I wouldn't say wild, we don't have a jungle, we don't, but they're homeless dogs in the street. So what do you do? You know, there are people that pick them up and say, look, I don't have space in my house, I'll just leave the dog in a shelter. Since you have, since you have the ability with communication, are there dogs that say, why? I was happy out there. I never had to be in an enclosed environment. Um, I could run here and, 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 and smell all the trees and, and all that. Are there dogs that say, no, I, I wish I was still out there on the street? Yeah, there are some that are like that. There are they some. Yeah, I find it more with cats. Like there is one cat frequently is, you know, will leave the shelter just yeah. escape and yeah. so the first time the first time it happened um the the um animal shelter owner contacted me oh my god you know she's gone yeah. and I don't know where she is so yeah. I tuned in and the cat was nearby she was right. in the because I told the cat show me where you are like send me images of the buildings right and so after she sent me the the images, she said, I'm not far away. I just wanted to get out. I, I want to be around. I want to see people. I want to, mm -hmm. I want to experience, you know, the city. And I told her, well, okay, when you're ready, stay in one position so they can find you. Wow. And, yeah. And the next day they walked out and they were like, she was just around the corner. I said, yeah, I told her to stay still <laughs> when she's ready so that you could find her. 
So yeah, I do get where animals do want to be outside. They want to connect with nature. They may not always want to be, of course, in a shelter. Yes, they they like maybe like you said, they're they're starving. They're not eating. They do need some support. But would it be good for us to to have them go back out in nature? Hmm, that's an interesting because when I talk to them, they understand that they're that they can't find food all of the time and that they do need to be supported. But I wonder if there's a way where it, there can be both, where they can know that they're being supported by us, but then can go out in the wild. Because I know like in Hong Kong, right? There are wild dogs. I saw them yesterday. Ooh. I went on a hike oh. and they don't bother us. They don't bother us. They're just, they're just by themselves, right? They're just yeah. doing their thing, enjoying nature. Yeah. However, they, you know, they do need to eat. They do need to eat. So um, I have this incredible, wonderful, wonderful lady who I call my friend. She is um, from Poland. And what she does is she does not, she, she, she has a cat and she does not have the ability to um, adopt pets right now in her life. So what she does is at six in the morning, every morning she catches a bus. The night before, she cooks this huge platter, you know, vegetables, rice, all healthy stuff for her dogs. And she knows exactly where to go to the hills. And she lays it there. She waits and she watches the dogs come and eat. And rain, the heat, whether it's cold, anything, six o'clock, she's there to feed the dogs. And it is such an amazing thing that she does so she was the one who saw that one of the dogs was pregnant and it was through her that I was able to adopt Bodhi and Moksha and wow. when Bodhi and Moksha came to the shelter where they were placed they their brother had passed away but they were riddled riddled with ticks and they were just babies riddled mm. with ticks and it took um, the shelves are like a week to to pull out all the ticks one by one. And so this is where, apart from hunger and thirst, you know, um, their lives were saved, you know, because we don't. So so these are things that that's why when I asked you at the, in the beginning, do they want to be a sh in the shelter? I I struggle uh, with these with this question. I struggle with it. And. And I still need to continue praying on it because, um, you know, I do. I do struggle. I wish, just like you said, I wish people, well, here's the thing, okay? So, um, and that's, again, a, a question I wanted to ask you, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain why. You know, there was a time, um, and it was, thank God, it was just a moment where I had my, I had adopted my, my first um puppy, two puppies, years and years ago, and um, I fell in love with the puppies within, I think, you know, you fall in love within 24 hours, right, go mad, and um, and then there was um, someone who said, oh, I can't come to your house because I, I don't like, I don't like, uh, I don't like pets, you know, and I thought, hmm, people that cannot like this kind of adorable dog, maybe the person is, well, I was judging the person, okay? Mm -hmm. I was judging, oh, maybe the person has some problem in their personality, but that was so wrong. And within two seconds, I realized I was wrong. It took me two seconds to realize that that is not the right judgment. Why? Because then I thought of a couple of my very, very close friends who are one of the nicest, kindest, most generous, warmest human beings ever. Um, and they, I know that they, they don't like pets. Um, two of them are just afraid. And the other, uh, they, they just find them, you know, not pleasant to even be around. But, but that does not make them a, a, a not nice person or a not kind person. So it took me two seconds to say, no, I know these people. So here's, here's a question. Sherlyn, why are there people that find them? I can understand that there is a fear factor. Maybe they were bitten before or something. But what is this this thing? And, and again, that hinders 
so many of us humans to adopt because mm -hmm. they look at a dog and they can't seem to overcome, um, you know, that, 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 you know, that feeling of, yeah, don't, don't, don't bring the dog near to me, you know? I, so, so I, why is that, Sherlyn? Why do you think that is? I think there are a couple of reasons. <clears throat> like you said, they've had, you know, not good experiences when at some point in their life about animals. So this is why they don't want to adopt. Um, I think also they don't see animals as life forces, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't see them as, you know, here are these, you know, souls who are here to guide us. They just see them as an animal. Oh, okay. You're just, so there's a hierarchy, right? That we may have like, okay, we're here. We should connect only to each other. Animals, animals are just here. They're in the way, whatever, right? There are people who say these things. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's a judgment. Yeah. They're, they're only here to like, you know, like create a mess. I heard someone say that to me. Oh, they're just here. They're just, you know, making a mess of, of the earth. And, and, you know, they're just like, you know, um, peeing and pooping everywhere. Oh, why are they? I mean, really, there are people who say this and I'm like, oh, okay, well, we can look at it in a different way. Right. And so I'll just introduce that to them. Um, so uh, so those are the two main reasons I think. Um, and then another reason just could be that, um, okay, if I look at it from a, and I know not everybody believes in past lives, but I think a lot of that, of that also is a history of mm -hmm. maybe other lifetimes where mm -hmm. there've been, you know, kind of like experiences where you were killed by an animal. I mean, if you're killed by an animal, you're not going to like animals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Gonna be, there's going to be right. that history somewhere. I mean, if you believe in that. So that's that's yeah. another aspect I just will, you know, briefly touch on. That that's yeah. a that's what I find when I work with um, sure. you know, with people and sure. animals. Sure. Well, I that that I I I subscribe to that belief too because it's got to come from somewhere. But um, and I, and and I believe it's coming from from a past experience and. If it's not this experience right now that, you know, in our this life, it's, it's from another. But, um, and, you know, and, and if I can even say, like, people who have allergies, you know, anyone who has an allergy to animals, it's, it's, it's actually from a previous experience where you've been harmed by animals. Oh, okay. Yeah, because oh. what an allergy does, right? It's like, you know, if the animal gets close, it's going to harm you. So you have an allergy to keep them away. So in right. a way, it's like to protect yourself. So this is one perspective with the work right. that I do um, oh. and that can actually be healed so that people don't have to have an allergic reaction to animals. Oh, okay. All right. So, so you know, I have, I do have three success stories, three success stories, um, three age groups. A young lady in her late 30s, a lady in her mid 50s, and a lady in her mid 70s. At different times, each a few years apart, different stages, um, and three different ladies, they had said, oh, we want to come visit. Can we come stay with you? And my answer is always, and this is with all my friends, I say to all of them, yes, you can come stay with me, but I just want to remind you that I live with five dogs. Uh, well, at that time, there was only two, no, three, then four, and now five. Um, and I said to them, and, and you got to understand that my dogs, I will not hide them in the back. I will not keep them away because this is their home. This is their sanctuary. They live here with me, with me. And I, you know, I don't want to discomfort them each time I have a guest. And these three were like, well, okay, you know, we were not very pet friendly. They, they had, obviously they didn't have an aversion. They weren't scared. Otherwise they wouldn't even consider coming to stay with me. But they just, you know, they, they kind of, they, they, they were not, they, they weren't pet friendly, you know, um, right. didn't really care. So, I mean, so they said, no, no, 
but we'll be okay as long as you know, but we won't go and play with them and pet them if you don't mind. I go, no, that's fine. And um, they came. I'm telling you, Sherlyn, each one went back. And this is, this is in years ago, so in, in span of a couple of years, each one, the minute they went back, they adopted a pet. Yeah. The 30-something-year-old said to me, the late in her 30s, she says, because of being with, with the pets in your house, um, I just, the, your dogs, I've realized that, you know, I felt so much that I wanted to go back, get a dog so that my kids could grow up and play. And now, you know, the family, we feel our family's complete. Okay. Then the one in her late 50s was dealing with... Um, uh, you know, the change of life, um, children going to college and hormonal and all that, you know, that we have. Dog helped her completely with depression. This is, these are my close friends. And then the 70 something year old went back and was diagnosed with, um, with, uh, cancer and has this dog that has supported her emotionally in yeah. every which way possible and so um and there's another one actually who hadn't come to stay with me but her house she lost her husband in her late 70s she lost mm -hmm. her husband was devastated someone just one of the kids just dropped this dog at our house saying listen we got the dog but we're allergic now what are we going to do so the lady said okay fine i don't want dogs because they're inseparable she cannot imagine her life without her dog um so, yes, there are success stories out there that, you know, when, when they try it out. So the beauty is shelters do allow fostering for a little period of time, and shelters are very accommodating. Look, try, doesn't work out, bring bring the dog back. We want the dog back. So so I think um, for those out there who who are afraid to make a commitment, that's fine. That's fine. But if you want to try something else versus if you want to stop, hurting so much and you don't want to keep taking those numbing pills you know um and you don't have enough friends to support you because they have busy lives and your family has busy lives you can you can give it a shot and and see how how that works out i'm just saying you know i'm not i'm i'm a huge advocate for adoption for sure um yeah. for all the yeah. right reasons but then also um, you've got to see whether you have the space in your house, the personality to take care of the dog and the ability, you know, the physical ability. Can I walk the dog? So there's, there's some criteria there involved and, and because you're bringing another um, life into yours and you also have a responsibility to nurture that life. And I think it's so beautiful, this this two-way street of, of nurturing. Um, thank you, Sherlyn, for for explaining this thing about how how the animals in the shelters do want to get adopted and, mm -hmm. and how beneficial that is. Now, what are the best ways we can be with our animals? What, what are the best? Wow, the best ways. Well, really the animal wants you to be yourself, right? So, be comfortable and open with them. They they are they want to support you. So even if you're having a bad day, because sometimes people think, oh, maybe I shouldn't yell or or I shouldn't, you know, like um, you know, express myself like if I'm angry or something in front of my animal. No, your animal is okay with that because they understand that you need to release. And they're there to be with you so that as you release, then the other side of it is, is that you get nurtured. They're like, oh, okay, it's okay. Let it go and let's play now. Or or you can, or you can just, you know, um, just touch me, whatever. So that's one thing I think people need to know is that the animal wants you to be yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and they do like interaction. Mm -hmm. Even if your animal doesn't seem like they want to play with you long, 
-hmm. So the interaction can just be like momentary or it can be all day. All of them want to interact with you. So Mm -hmm. interact with them in some way, find a way to like play with them. Um, You can even talk to them. People think that animals don't understand them. Animals understand you much more. Because again, they're tuning into your emotions. Wow. So when they and they feel your emotions, um, sometimes before you start even expressing it, or some people who suppress their emotions, the dog or the or the cat, they understand that you're doing that. So they'll understand the emotions. So you know, be free to um, talk to them about that. It doesn't mean that you're crazy or or anything, because people think, "What talk to my animal? That's just crazy." Yeah. No, it's not. It's it's a form of therapy when you think about it, yeah. because you get to express to some to to um a, a a you know a life force an animal who has no judgment, they're yeah. just there to listen. Yeah. How else can we be with our animal? Um, you know, even walking with them, mm-hmm. going out in nature with them, they love mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but here's one thing I want to say again, is that your animal chooses you. So they kind of have an idea of your personality. Okay. So match, they, so they, they know that there's a match there. So if don't do anything that you feel like, oh my God, this is, this is so tiring. It's so, it's such a burden. No, do, do what you like. The animal has chosen you and they know your personality. They know your your um, way of being, and they understand yeah. it and support it. Thank you, because there's an element of guilt I have um, in the evenings. Um, you know, sometimes I work. I work during. You know, I'm, I'm sitting and I'm busy working. Then the day progresses, and then comes the evening, and I'm having my dinner. And of course, when I work, I just pet them. They come to me, and they go under my arm, and then I pet them. Or they want to be on my lap while I'm on the laptop. That's all good. But I'm not consciously with them. And then comes the evening. And then I look at them. And I'm like, oh, my God, you guys. I haven't I haven't really communicated, like, even, like, like smiled at you or played a, with the ball or, or anything. And so I want to watch a movie. And I'm like, okay, I want to watch a movie. I don't feel like I, I just need to chill, wind up. So I bring them all together. And we sit and watch a movie together. And of course, I feel guilty. I'm like, what is this? You know, I, I, the whole day, I'm, I'm just sitting down doing my work and watching a movie, and I'm not consciously like entertaining them. I don't mean you. I need to entertain them all day. I'm just saying, even five minutes. I didn't even give them five minutes. So what you're saying is that they are in tune with you. That that they are forgiving of that. That's not what. That it's okay. Is that what you're saying? That that is okay. It is okay. They completely understand what you're doing. They they hear your thoughts. They know that you're working. They just know that you love them. They know this. And that is that makes them feel great, right? They're supporting you. They're like, oh, we're, you know, we're, we are aligned with our purpose. We're doing what we're meant to do. Even if you don't, you don't talk to them, they know your love for them. And they know that you, and they're sending you love and they know that they're supporting you. So yes, no need to worry. Wow. So here's the other thing. So this is, this is our pets, you know, that are in our house and that we, we, we have control over being with them. How about what are the best ways that we can be with feral or wild animals? What are the best ways we can be with them? Yes. Well, you know, like yesterday I told you I went on a on, I went on a long hike and I saw a couple of feral animals and I just, you know, I connected to them. I just like tuned to my heart, con- you know, connected to them and just to send them a high, just to send them a you know, a, a message mm-hmm. and you know, they, they responded. I mean, they were calm. They were just like, okay, hi, we were just watching you humans walk by, you know? So I think the best way to support them is when you do see one, um, yes. Do we want to be cautious a little bit because we don't know this animal? Yes, we do. But if I think if we just send love to them, that supports them a lot that that will help them 
you know, see that humans do have a softer side, a loving side. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I do that all the time. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's the best way to support them. Mm -hmm. um, if, if like, I, I think it's a beautiful thing that the your Polish friend does mm -hmm. where she brings food out to them. And for those of you who do live in areas where there are, you know, feral animals and you know that they're needing some kind of support, I, I think she's an excellent example. Yeah. So that's something physically that people can do as well. Mm -hmm. And I know other people do it. I'm sure they have the idea to do that and they do it. Maybe mm -hmm. we just don't hear those people. But um, those, of, those of us like me who don't live out there and I see them maybe once every two weeks, you know, just send them love. Yeah. And, and she's, one among many, many unsung heroes around the world that does this, goes out there and feeds the dogs, feeds the, the cats that are out there in the wild, literally in the wild. And, uh, and you know, and, and, and every day, you know, knows that, and, and the, the dogs know it. So they all come or the cats know it and they all come at a certain time. They know exactly, they come down from the hills and they go exactly down where she lays the, the thing and she steps away and she watches them eat it all. And she's one of so many unsung heroes. Yeah, I even have a friend who lives in Chicago and there oh. are, you know, cats. So mostly there are a lot of, um, well, there are cats and dogs, but mo for some reason, yeah, yes. I think it's her energy. She attracts the feral cats, you know, who don't have any homes. And what she does is she'll put like little bowls of milk out for them. Or a little, or some food. She'll just leave it out, and yeah, that's her home that they come to. They they go, and then they go out and do their thing. I mean, they go out in the city wherever they go. But this is how she supports them. Right. So, Sherlyn, um, you know this this problem that we have with countless homeless dogs that are hungry, um, wounded. Um, sick, ill, and need attention and help. But they're out there, they're homeless. Um, is there, apart from just going and, and, and bringing food, this, this suffering, the suffering going on there, you know? Now, I don't know to what extent, but we all know that there is. Um, is there a solution to that? I mean, the shelters are overflowing and people can only adopt so many dogs. I mean, no one a fool like me to go and <laughs> to get five five dogs, you know. So, and and each dog is is having so many babies out there. I mean, is there is there a solution that that I don't know? Is there? Yeah, that's a very good question because I, I there has to be a solution, right? Because if there where where there's a challenge, there's a solution, and. You know, I what I really love about the young people <laughs> now is they they want to like save the environment. Mm -hmm. They they have so many ideas. Like I was just thinking, isn't there, there like you know a you know a, a vet uh, a vet a veterinarian uh, on wheels, <laughs> right? I just had this thought. Like you know, they go around, they drive around, and then they they help the animals, right? Oh, they they. Yeah give them, they can check them and, and um, uh, help give them some medicine, whatever they need. And then they can go back and go back. check on them later on. I, mean, I think there's so many different ideas. Like when people say like, oh, well, I, I don't know what to do. Well, I think we have to like brainstorm and find ways in which to do that. So um, I think there's a solution we just haven't come up with it. Yeah. And so that's why I'm I'm kind of directing this to the young people. Hey, young people, you all have so many ideas. I like that. <laughs> you know, I like that very much. Through social media, they can help. I mean, there's so, so um, yeah, but I always think there's a solution. Where there's a challenge, there's always yeah. a solution. And yeah. some, some people will get that inspiration, like, oh, maybe we can do this. You know, uh, Sherlyn, I interviewed, I don't know if I told you this, an incredible lady, just like you. She does something different. 
she is, again, for me, one of the ultimate unsung heroes. She lives in Costa Rica, and her interview, we will, we we're placing her interview out there very soon. I interviewed her for well over an hour um, a couple of weeks ago. She lives in Costa Rica. She is so incredible. Um, she will tell, she was, she was on TED Talk. And that's how I saw her. And I called and I said, please, I, I need to speak to you. What has she done? I'll tell you what she did. So she lives there. And it started with she adopted one dog, then from the street, and then it continued on, you know. And um, she realized that, you know, her husband was saying, basically, there's no more room in our house. You, you've adopted already 100 dogs. She has a very soft heart. She has a very, very soft heart. And they came up with a plan in Costa Rica. Um, her grandfather had land of over 300 hectares, hectares. And she said, they both husband and wife decided, let's, let's convert that into a shelter for dogs. Get this, Sherlyn. You will see the videos of this shelter. It's not a shelter. It's called Territorio de Zaguates. It is, means the territory for, you know, those kind of, dogs that nobody wants mm -hmm. and so not only does she pick them up from the street not only are they homeless they're also dogs that people just don't want maybe the dog got sick uh, or too old and and all that she has two over two thousand dogs running like wild on her land you, you you will check out that video they're running wild on her land they are enjoying themselves. They're playing, and she and and in the interview you'll hear how how she does it, how she runs it, and there's dogs all around her. It is is just mind blowing how she does it. Obviously, she needs support, you know, to run it. It's not free, and but her story is beautiful, and that's to me like she's she's proactive in trying to to solve this problem on her in her territory Costa Rica yeah and, and, and imagine she doesn't want to put them in cages she goes no this is not you know this is for the for the rest of their life this this is their their she calls them their forever home because a lot of them most of them will not get adopted they're not good looking they mm -hmm. you know they're they're sick they're old whatever it is so she already, when she takes them in, it's not that she's promoting adopt, adopt, I need them out of here. There are some of them, I mean, there's a lot that gets adopted. But in her mind, she brings them in and she says, guys, this is your forever home. I will be there for you till the end of your life now. Uh, yeah. you, will, you will adore her. Yeah. So, so. Mm -hmm. And that reminds me too, like when I lived in South Africa, I went to like an elephant sanctuary. Oh. So have these elephants, that whole area is theirs. They can roam around and they have people there who kind of monitor them, make sure that they're okay. Right. That's and incredible. I remember I was chased by two, we were in a car, but we were chased by two of them. You know, one of them was a young, a young elephant that was just being playful. This was like years ago before I even did animal communication. Wow. That was fun. So yeah, that's another idea. Was is, this outside of Port Elizabeth? Somewhere outside Port uh, Elizabeth? This was, okay, this was when I went down to Cape, Cape Town. So oh. it was Cape Town going, because we took, we drove for, I lived in Johannesburg. So we just went a roundabout way to get to Cape Town and come back up. So this was on my drive back up to Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure exactly where it is, but it's along that route between Cape Town and Johannesburg. Interesting, because uh, I lived in Cape Town for, for a while. And I would, I, when I go back there to visit my, my family, my friends who, who are my family there, um, I, I will, I'll try and make an uh, a note of it that I'd love to visit visit this you know this this sanctuary for elephants yeah. now are there areas that we need or are there areas we want to avoid in the way we treat animals well definitely we want to avoid any kind of violence right with animals we don't want to we don't want to do anything to make them afraid of us so like you know, with some animals, like sudden movements, especially if you don't know the animal, 
no sudden movements. You just want to like be calm, be as calm as possible. Um, we want to show like with some animals, let's say um, where they're afraid of us, you, you want to, you don't want to come to them. You want them to feel comfortable to right. come to you. So right. you want to just create this like aura in a way of peace and just calm. Um, so you want to do that as much as possible. So, so again, no sudden movements. You don't want to like do something to make them feel threatened or unsafe. Um, you, you don't, and, and then if you're playing with a dog, you don't want to be too rough with them either. Um, and they'll let you know because they'll growl or they'll kind of mm -hmm. like snap or something like that. And if they do that, don't get upset. Don't say, oh, that's a bad dog. I've heard this before. I'm like, no, the, the, the dog is trying to tell you that yeah. uh, I don't like this. So yeah. listen to them. If we yeah. can just listen and observe their physical you know, reactions to us. I think a lot of times we just don't observe. We think animals should be a certain way. No, look at them like they have their own character and personality. They want to be treated like like how you may want to be treated. I mean, would you like someone to just come up to you and just like, you know, shake you? No, you don't. So I think, you know, have just a little more um, peace, calm, be gentle with them and allow them to come to you and they'll let you know the amount of like physical, you know, um, interactions they want to have, you know, like there are some dogs I'd like to jump on you and then they like to roll around. Okay. If you, if you're, if you like that, allow them to show you, but then you can also say, okay, okay, mm, not so rough, you know, and just, you know, just, just communicate with them in a way where again, they feel safe and they can be themselves as well. Thank you for that. I think you have answered a lot of questions that I had, and I'm sure, you know, the NYP viewers also were wondering about a whole bunch of these, these questions in their mind, but thank you for that. I think this session, which we split in two, called Our Connection, Why Are Animals in Our Lives? I think, um, Sherlyn, thank you for explaining a lot of stuff, stuff that, that is new for me, not sure, and I'm sure for everyone, um, but uh, I think th there's a lot more to learn, there's a lot more, but I think you've done this beautiful for us, in, and you spread it in two sessions, and thank you for, for, for the patience in explaining it. Now, next week, we are going to do the fourth and final session, and I, I think this is a very sensitive session why is it sensitive um sensitive in a, in a in a you know in a yeah it's a very emotional session because we all all the minute you bring puppy home or a dog or a cat home no matter how old that we know for a fact their lifespan is supposed to be much shorter than ours so inevitably we are going to face the moment where we have to say bye to our beloved pet and um, that grief is incredible and so next week you are going to explain a lot to us and this is called overcoming the sense of loss and hurt how can we see our animals passing in a positive way? I mean, I cannot wait to hear your take on this um, because who, who puts that in the same sentence? Animal passing, we see it in a positive way. And I'm sure you are going to impart a lot of wisdom, a lot of you know knowledge that you have acquired through your studies and in your 20 plus years with animals, you're going to, you're going to impart that to us. And I can't wait because um, this is something that we are all going to go through and, and wow, you know, or have been. And, and pet parents don't forget, you know, they still hold on to that grief. They still, I'm guilty of that too. I am. And even though I'm guilty, I will still keep on adopting because 
I still I know that it's something that my 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 beloved pet who passed away have had two already that have passed away. I know that's what they want. They don't want me to give up on adopting. But they're saying, hey, listen, you know, I gave you 12, 13 years of joy. You're going to grieve for one year. It's worth it. Adopt more because they need you and you need them. Um, so, so for me, um, you know, I'm guilty of still mourning their, their loss. And I cannot wait for you to, to knock me on the head and remind me again these, these things. So, yes. Sirian, thank you so much. Thank you thank for you today. So yes, thank you. I really, I appreciate the opportunity to share. And um, yes, and this is, it's again, like I said, I can't help but saying it. It's about us supporting earth, supporting every living thing on earth. So thank you so much. Yes. And everyone, Sherlyn is super approachable by email, all her contact details. She has her social media. She, she runs workshops, private sessions. She teaches classes and it doesn't matter where you live. You could be right now in the U.S. and Africa in Russia, wherever you are, you know, um, please, anytime you feel you, you contact her and she's, she's ready for you. Thank you so much for this, Sherlyn. Take care and I'll see you next week. We will okay. all see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.